What's up my bro, Tundrum here, back with another video, and today I'm going to be showing you my overpowered $15 budget Gitrog Monster EDH deck. Now, I've been playing the Gitrog Monster for a while, but I noticed my deck, my competitive Gitrog deck I played, was exceptionally expensive to actually build, like it took me almost a year to finally collect all the cards to build the deck, which a lot of people may not have the time to do. Um, so I thought, why not make a budget version that's nearly as strong? Now I was like, this is going to be hard because the Gitrog revolves are in so many complex combos involving Dredge, and it would be very hard to make a budget list. But one of my friends pointed me to a certain card that isn't actually a dredge card that goes insane with the Gitrog monster. Now you might have seen the title and saw that it said 92 lands. Yes, this deck does run 92 lands, but it is still exceptionally powerful. Um, you'll soon see why. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into the list by looking at the commander. The Gitrog Monster. Now, the Gitrog Monster, for you, those of you who don't know, he's a 5 mana, free, black, and a green, for a 6-6 six, six legendary creature, Frog Horror. He has Death Touch, so that's pretty nice, he's a big body. Then he says, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the Gitrog Monster unless you sacrifice a land. So that's not a great start. But then he says you can play an additional land on your turn, so that kind of counteracts. But then, the, as you all know, this is what makes him busted, this bottom line of text. Whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. So as well as himself being able to draw two cards a turn and let you play extra lands and be a 6-6 six, six death touch, he also has this nice ability. So, so things like Evolving Wilds, they draw you cards. Discarding lands, they draw you cards. Milling yourself, they draw you cards. Um, he's actually incredibly powerful. Now, I might as well say why we're running 92 lands now. So how it works, if you have seven cards at the end of your eight cards, and sorry, at the end of your turn, you have to discard down. And if you have a Gitrog in hand and have 92 lands in your deck, that means you'll always have at least one land in your hand, right? Um, almost always your hand will be full of lands in this deck. So you've got your eight lands in hand, discard one, and then you get to draw a card. Then, because you have more than seven cards in hand again, the discard phase refreshes. You discard a card, you draw a card. Do you see where this is going? You can just infinitely draw and discard, stock up your graveyard full of lands, and draw through your entire deck until you get what you need. Now I'm going to get on how we utilize that. First up, we have the main win condition in this deck, Worm Harvest. Now, because it has retrace, it, we can just essentially, for once we get our lands in the um, graveyard from the Gitrog, so we play the Gitrog on turn 5, do that thing, draw, let's say, seven, draw like 35 cards, or 70 cards, or say, discard 70 lands into our graveyard, and then we finally hit Worm Harvest. We can have it either in our hand or in our graveyard, because of the retrace ability, we can infinitely play it as long as we have the Gitrog. And even if we don't, because we have 92 lands, we're very really not going to be able to replay it. So pretty much Worm Harvest is 5 mana, and it says create a 1-1 one, one black and green worm for each land card in your graveyard. So we do this, stash our graveyard up with 50 lands, play the Worm Harvest, and bam! On turn 6, we have an army of 30, 40, 50 worms. Now this isn't too insane, but it's exceptionally hard to interact with. Even once you've played it once, you're already in a game-winning position with an absolute army. And every turn you do that again, and your army just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And will normally kill people easily the turn after you play it. But, if they do somehow exile your graveyard, or... Counter Worm Harvest and like it gets exiled when it's countered, there are cards that do that, or it's exiled while it's in your graveyard, you can be in a little bit of trouble. So we've got some other win cons. Now our other win con, of course Worm Harvest is our main win con, we can be in a bit of trouble if it's countered. But next up we have Devoted Druid and Quill Spike combo. So this is another combo because we can draw our whole deck out as long as we get the Gitrog in and end our turn with him on the field. Um... We have Devoted and Quill Spike, so this is a combo that essentially gets the an infinitely big Quill Spike. Tap Devoted Druid, put a minus one, minus one counter to untap it. Then with the mana we use from Devoted Druid, we activate Quill Spike to remove the minus one, minus one counter from Devoted Druid to give Quill Spike free free. So we can do this over and over and get an infinitely big Quill Spike, and 
this isn't necessarily going to win you the game outright, so we're also running Hepatra to finish off that combo. She says whenever one or more minus one minus one counters are put on a creature, create that will create a one one black green snake with death touch. So you do this, get infinite black snakes and green snakes, sorry, and then you win the game. Uh, well, it's similar to worm harvest. You get infinite and then you swing on the next turn. Um, and the good thing about divided druid, if we have it in our starting hands. Because it can tap for two mana one turn, we can get the Gitrog into play on turn three. And then we won't actually be able to do our discard combo that turn because we'll still have seven cards in hand. But then next turn, we can then, on turn four, we can then discard all our um, lands because we'll have eight cards in hand. And then win the game like that. Um, so that is also nice. I was originally, instead of all these combo pieces, I just had the deck just Worm Harvest and six ramp cards in case we had them in a starting hand but it's much more efficient to have an alternate win con because i have definitely had games trying out this deck when worm harvest has been exiled and i essentially just lose from there but having this as another win con is also very nice and now we have our final reserve plan and a little bit of utility we're running siphon life raven's crime and Savage Consumption. So pretty much what these cards are, these are just backup cards we can play. Just essentially, if we get to the point where both our combos have been countered, we can just loop between these three cards as our three options every turn. So we have Savage Consumption. It's four mana, create a free free green beast with retrace. So every turn, whenever we want, we can essentially pay four mana to create a free free beast. Um... It is also good if we have the get rog on the field, but we don't need to have the get rog on the field because then the discarding lane replaces itself. We then have Siphon Life. It's free mana. Target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. This doesn't seem that efficient, but once we get to like 12 or um, 15 or 9 mana, which is pretty... Oh, well, it's not, not too easy because we are just playing one, essentially one land a turn because we have to sack a land for the get rog. But if we get rid of the get rog... Well, I don't know. We can pretty much get... If we get later in the game, we can then end up doing this four or five times a turn, which can actually start to rapidly drain our opponents. And then we also have Raven's Crime, which for one mana, target opponent discards a card. So we can do this over and over and essentially completely drain our opponents out of all their cards in their hand. And then while we're playing our Savage Consumptions and Drain Life cards, and then we can just create an army of beasts and swing in and kill them within three or four turns. Um, it's definitely not efficient, it's mainly just a reserve, but especially with Raven's Climb, it can just be a bit of utility to help us um, win the game earlier with our main combo pieces. And now finally, we're on to the mana base. Now the mana base, I didn't really write in much of a mana base for this, just because I want it to be budget. I'm not going to write, let's say, all the fetch lands and like cavernous souls, things like that, but... Really, it does not matter about your mana base. Because your deck's 90% lands, you can easily get away with basics. It's slightly more efficient to have a few dual lands. So I just suggest maybe running Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse, Jungle Hollow, Foul Orchard, Golgari Gilgate, and Golgari Rock Farm. Um, they're just all decent dual lands. They're common. They work just as well as other dual lands. Because uh, we're always going to have enough lands to play. We can just play them earlier on. Um... But really, considering the chances of you not getting one of your colours with your deck being 90 lands is exceptionally low. Um, so dual lands aren't really needed. But if you want to, feel free to throw them in. Uh, these are the main six I would suggest um, on a budget. And yeah, guys, that actually concludes the video. Um... This deck, it's super fun to play. It's always great, just nothing, 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 pass, pass. You're like, what are they doing? Get rog, brrr, discard for your whole deck, and then next turn make an absolute swarm. I win many games with this deck. There are definitely times when either, A, my enemies are running really competitive decks and combo off on turn three, four, or five before I can actually do anything. It often has, most of the time, doesn't win against super competitive decks, but it is definitely high power. I win a lot of games against other, um, not CDH, but high power um, decks. It does occasionally have the problems where they exile your graveyard or you, they counter your worm harvest and then interact with your next combo, and you are in a bit of trouble then. But in most situations, it's an extremely strong deck if it can survive to turn 5 or 6. Then it just goes crazy and destroys your opponents. And yeah, guys, that completes the video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.